Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm super, super, super excited. And actually, right when I hit record, I was like, I probably probably should sage this area because of the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so after I finish doing the introductions, if you guys see me scrounging around for my lighter, that's why I'm, I'm in a sage um, because we know we know we're in a very interesting time of, of our spiritual development on this timeline right now. And so first of all, I've got my co-host today, Stephanie, from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. And of course, the star of the hour of this show is my friend Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. And before I even ask you ladies how you're doing it, I just want to go ahead and remind our viewers, if you please go ahead and hit the subscribe button for both Cindy at Sacred Garden Yoga. She's got so many interesting conversations, a lot, of course, with Stephanie and me, but she also offers some yoga practices and that kind of stuff for those of you who are interested in starting a practice. I'm just going to go ahead. Michael, can you come in and just watch the Zoom? Because I'm hearing the Zoom echo a little bit. And then, of course, Stephanie at Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, who just hit, hit 6,000 subscribers today. Awesome job. <laughs> She's been doing her elemental readings. Um, for air fire and water signs she's also been doing a lot of collective readings guys so um so please go ahead and make sure you're subscribed she's seriously one of my best uh my, my favorite readers on youtube i watch a ton of readers on youtube so does stephanie we're constantly sending each other readings back and forth but she's <laughs> one of my favorite um and i don't think it's i don't think it's me being biased because she's my friend she's really really good at what she does and i just want to re remind you guys because this has been a conversation coming up recently Really great book on the chakra system. You you know this book, right? Mm -hmm. I love that's the one that we used to use in uh, yoga teacher training. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love that one. Eastern body, Western mind. I know I sent it to Stephanie, and I've 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 taught. I, are y'all hearing that crackling sound? Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Uh, Michael, Magdalene, can you guys come in and and watch the Zoom and make sure that no prying eyes. Is it my microphone, Bryce? It might be. I'm going to try to pull it away from the speaker a little bit and see if it changes. Anyway, guys, but I will put this in a, um, a link to this in the description box below if anybody's interested. And the great thing about this book, too, I, I, I've been telling Stephanie is that you don't it's not a book you, you have to read all in one sitting because she uh, she separates it into all of the. Yeah, we lost. We lost your face, Cindy. <laughs> or we have your face. Oh, no, hold on. Let me get <laughs> <laughs> um she divides each chapter is a different chakra there you go yeah. so you don't have to read like you can you can read the first Moladara chapter and read it let it let it settle in for a couple of weeks and then go pick up the second one. Oh, we lost you again cindy they don't want us talking about this it. might happen this often happens actually when we start talking about things that we're going to talk about it happened again so um, yeah, because I don't think the powers that be want us, uh, the nefarious powers that be want us revealing these secrets about what oh, deep and on. I'm actually going to see where is my, okay. So now I can ask you ladies, how are y'all doing today? Good, how can are you still hear crackling? Well, if I can get my camera to work, I'd be great. <laughs> We're all discombobulated mm. today. It's because of the subject hey. we're talking about, I'm sure. Yeah, I will <laughs> light some sage too myself. So I'm gonna light my sage right now. I always like to light a candle first because sage is a bitch to light. <laughs> so not only yeah. that, but it st sometimes smells like funk. <laughs> what's that? What's that funny meme like when I sage my my house and realize I am the demon? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. I saw this meme that um it was like some sort of big explosion and it said um something oh, like that's not enough sage for the whole world or something like that like you need a, you need this amount of sage to, to sage up the whole world <laughs> you'd have to see it i mean uh, it's it's messy it too. like a huge sage stick <laughs> i mean it's like if it were only that easy if it were only that easy i'm actually gonna put some dragon's blood up as well um just for protection um and we're gonna ask i'm gonna ask right now if you're if you're watching right now and you would like some protection as well you can just say that you consent to the screen um, i'm gonna ask that again michael our buddy michael come in and watch this zoom and monitor the zoom as well as gabriel 
come in and monitor the Zoom and just keep all entities that are not here for our highest good out of this Zoom, all entities and guides that are here for our highest good, including Magdalene, including Isis, Hathor, and Yahshua, be invited in to help us get this message across because as Cindy has, I'm going to just use this as my little marker now. I just keep Cindy, thinking bippity boppity boo. Bippity boppity boo. <laughs> <laughs> Only good entities in the room now. Uh, it kind of looks like a bit of a, um, <laughs> anyway, which I'm not opposed to at all, guys. <laughs> plant medicine, baby, plant medicine. Um, it, um, it, it, and I, br I bring up Isis and Hathor because something you taught me, Cindy, a while ago, because we're going to be talking about demons. And the mm -hmm. priestess of Isis, they were like demon slayers, weren't they? They fought demons. Yeah. They were demon busters, demon slayers. Who are you going to call? But I think, you know, in, <laughs> in our, uh, the conversations that we've been having, at least in the yoga studio, and I think it, it sounds like you've been having them with your channel too. It's also understanding the, um, the idea of the demon and thinking that they're just all dark. Yeah, baby. They, want, they don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, and it's so funny. I think, like, the Demon Slayers, it's like Buffy the Vampire Slayer before Buffy even existed. She wasn't the OG. Isis Hathor were the OGs. Um, and then came back along Magdalene. But, um, yeah, so this is something that uh, I've spoken about with JCK. Uh, Stephanie and I have spoken about, and I've shared the story, I think, on another channel before, but I'm going to just briefly share a story that happened to me when I was in, like, my mid to late 20s. I think I was talking to you about this at the yoga studio this week, past weekend, Cindy. Um, so there's, I'm not going to get into specifics as to where this building is located, but you know, there's a lot of old buildings. And one of my friends from high school, her husband took over this restaurant, this Italian restaurant here in Georgia. And this restaurant, there are rumors around this restaurant. This was like probably 15, 14, 15 years ago. So I didn't know, I always kind of heard things and saw things. I was always kind of that weird spiritual kid, but I, I obviously this is long before the great awakening. But when they, he took over this restaurant, whenever the employees would go to the attic, weird things would happen. They would get scratched, pushed. Two of the employees who were very young got cancer. Like all this stuff was going on. And there were all these rumors that a particular group of people, um, whose first name starts with an F and the second one ends in Mason, um, or using the attic. Um, sorry guys, we have to be careful with censorship. You guys know who we're talking about, but they were using the attic for their rituals, we'll say. And so my, the wife of the guy who took over the restaurant, another friend of mine, the three of us decided we were going to go and like be Buffy the vampire slayer and see what was going on in this attic. And so we went up into the attic and it was one of the darkest places. I'd, it was like beyond dark. Like, you know, there's dark and there's dark, dark. And we were standing up there and we've been, I, in the South, everything's haunted. So like, that's nothing new. Um, and, but I'm standing up there and I was probably 25, 26 years old. And all of a sudden, Michael says to me in my ear, tell them they can go back into the light. Tell them they can go back into the light. I will help them. And so I said, um, you guys can go back into the light if you want to. And all of a sudden the purple light of Michael started moving around the room. And my other friends saw it and we were all like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. What do we do? <laughs> like bippity boppity boo. What did we just do? Um, and then after that, the purple light went around the room. It did get a lot lighter up in that attic. Now I haven't been back to that building since. So I don't know what, what went on and happened, but what, what I feel like was I was getting a message that now has become really, really clear. If we're, if we're talking about the Christian faith, which a lot of us, that's what we grew up with. I know the three of us, that's what we grew up with. We were taught that when Lucifer fell, fell a third of heaven went with him. What they neglect to tell us is that they didn't go, a lot of them, I know some of them might have, but a lot of them didn't go willingly. Some of them were taken. And this makes more sense with the grimoires we've been studying, the grand grimoire, um, the lesser keys of Solomon, the keys of Solomon, Moses's grimoires, because they speak about having to almost tether demons to them, like holding through the seal of Solomon, like that they don't just come willingly. So this makes sense. So I'm going to let Cindy take over from here because she is, she is literally Buffy the Vampire Slayer when it comes to this stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let you start off, Cindy, with your background and what you know about this um, situation we have with demons. 
Well, I've shared with you before, Bryce, that I received a training on how to do spirit release work. It was one of the first trainings that I learned how to do back in my 20s. And my teacher, uh, his name was Dr. Charles Skillis. He's passed away now. Um, but uh, when I received my training with him, it was, it was at first through hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy was my first form of training. And, you know, and then so I received like the regular hypno hypnotherapy training, like how to stop smoking and, you know, weight loss and all these things. But what his specialty was through hypnotherapy was spirit release work. And he was very passionate about it. It's, it's like actually what he did more than anything else. And so then after I finished my regular hypnotherapy training, I went through the spirit release training with him as well. And he taught it through hypnotherapy. And if anyone uh, knows about hypnotherapy too, like a lot of hypnotherapists, they have uh, scripts that they follow, like their scripts for stop smoking and scripts for, you know, and everything else. Well, he shared with us and now I'm not sure because this was so long ago and he's passed away and I wish that he was still alive so that I could answer so he could, you know, answer some of these questions for me now. Now, I haven't talked to him in probably over 20 years. So we haven't like talked to him in a long time before he passed. But, you know, I just find that it's fascinating that this is coming up right now. And then uh, when you were telling me, Bryce, about some of the conversations that you were having before on the channel, that they were using a very similar method. And it like it, it touched me because I, I mean, I knew that there were other people that had gone through the training with him, but I I'm not in communication with him. I didn't like, I, don't, I didn't know who was out there that followed the same particular script or the same particular way of uh, helping the, the, the entities or the demons or the extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call them to help them and to guide them back into the light. Because uh, most of the way that you see it, you know, it looks like very exorcism and, and like the demon is like this terrible, terrible thing. And when the truth is, if you read through the way that um, you were taught or, or I was taught to do it, is you, you speak to like once you pull the entity out or once you pull the, the demon out, you actually have through. Uh, OK, so let me go back a little bit through the hypnotherapy. The person who's doing the release, they're they're a channel like they're the channel or they're the voice for whatever entity is going to come through. And then as the practitioner, we're the one asking the questions and, and, and guiding the session along. All right. So um, anyways, when we summon and pull up whatever entity is attached, you know, one of the first questions that you ask is like, why are you here? And uh, if and if they've been on this planet before, like if they've been in human form on this planet before, it's like an earthbound entity and that they're usually easier. But if they've never been in human form before, then uh, very often it's like a like an end like a more of a demonic type entity or like an extraterrestrial, which they often end up being demonic like. Yeah. So, anyways, and uh, once you determine that, the the process of getting them to release and to let go is to help them realize that they have a spark of light within them, which is what I think is so completely brilliant about this method and this like this lineage of learning how to do this. And when you're having the conversations with these entities or these demons, they will often tell you that they don't want to do it anymore. Like, yeah. and, and if they, if they leave that person or if they leave that body that, you know, good chances are that they're going to be punished. You know, they're, they're tired of doing the work. Not, not, not all of them. You'll, you'll get entities of all sorts of, uh, uh, backgrounds, I guess you can say, but some of them um, have also, they've been lied to. They, the, the, the demon itself has been deceived and lied to. Uh, they've been told like, you, you know, you ask them, okay, what have you been told about the light? And they'll often say, oh, well that uh, we're told to avoid the light. The light is harmful. The light is going to hurt us. 
You know, that, that's like uh, the, one of the first deceptions that they're told. And then the, another big deception is that they don't have any light inside of them. And so then if they go to the light, they're afraid of it because they think it's going to hurt it. It's going, it's, it's going to burn them. But when you're going through the release process, one of the things that you do is, uh, like you do, you know, you call upon the mighty rescue spirits of light, Archangel Michael, and all this, and you enmesh them in light, like anything that's there. And then we, you know, we as we're talking to the entity, we say, okay, well, you have you're enmeshed in light right now. Is it hurting you? Is it harming you? And they and they're like, oh, well, no, it isn't. I was like, well, how does it feel? It's like, oh, you know, it actually kind of feels good. Um, so then they, they begin to realize more, more of the, the truth. And then, you know, sometimes they, they, they get kind of upset because they were deceived this whole entire time. Okay. And, and so, yes. Yeah, so, and then the second deception, as I said, is that they're told that they don't have any light inside of them. Where everything, at least it's my belief, like everything is of God or, or that higher intelligence, that greater intelligence, whatever the universe, whatever you want to call it. Everything comes from a spark, including these, these entities. But yeah. they have just been so um, taught that they are from like the pits of hell and they're only, you know, there to do dark things. But again, that, that's, a, that's a deception. And the way that you get them to start to go back into the light is first you have them find uh, them, you have them find the spark of light that's within them. And then they'll see like this little spark within them and they're like, <laughs> I didn't know I had that. You know, they're like, oh wow. And then you you get that entity to uh, transform into the light. And then when they transform into the light, then they can see, you know, oh my gosh, I've been doing this harm. And they, and they usually go back and apologize to the person that they've been attacking or attach themselves to. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, then it, and, and then they are also much more willing to repair any damage that they've done to that person. Like once they actually recognize and realize that they've been lied to um, and they're in the, the light they're like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I've done all this damage. And then they'll go back in and, you know, they'll they'll do reparations of the damage. Almost and then that you you send them, you know, then eventually they, they go very willingly. So part of the, the release process is getting them to realize that they've been lied to this whole entire time, which to me, I don't know, as I said, it's just a... It's a beautiful thing because what we all need is more it, more light and to try to admonish the heaviness, the darkness. And uh, when, I don't know, it's just the, the, I guess it's the realization when, you know, you're exposed to this kind of work, like how many layers of deception go on and like these are like, you know, beings that they too have been deceived. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, they are deceiving you, but it's because they've been deceived themselves, you know, and when giving a, when given a choice, they'll go back once they realize that they're not going to be punished. Like if they go into the light now, not all of them will. Some of them will are just, you know, they're pretty enmeshed in the dark and they would rather go back to where they came from and suffer they, the they punishments and all that stuff. So, I mean, they, they still have a choice and they can decide where they want to go. It's that stock. It's just around. fascinating to realize how many just don't or, know. Or view, like the they, they have, were mind controlled and they were mind scrambled and they were, they had developed probably a sense of Stockholm syndrome and they, you know, and this has been going on for well, our one little human life much longer. And it's, it's, you have empathy at that point for their, cause they are also, you realize they're also victims too. And I know somebody said too, maybe you can uh, uh, elaborate on this. Um, some of them are actually afraid of Lucifer or afraid of the human entity that called upon them. Like they don't want to, they're scared. Uh, I know I heard someone else say that, that they're afraid if they leave and go into the light, that they're going to be hunted down 
by Lucifer, by the, the black witch that called them and summoned them. And I watched the video where the guy had to explain through the hypnosis, no, you will be protected. You will be, and you will be healed. You will be healed by the light. And you're right. I see this almost every day on my channel. It's like darkness can't create anything. It, it can only invert what the light has already created. And it mm -hmm. may, when you start to understand the complexity, so it's not like when people are, are demon removing, they're not just zipping, zapping demons away like laser tag. It's a mm -hmm. complex, it's like healing a human. It's like trauma therapy that a human goes through, but with a demon. It's trauma therapy for a demon. <laughs> um, and it's usually the best way because once they go into the light, then they're gone. If they... Um, if they don't, then there's also a stronger possibility that they can come back to, to that person, especially if there is a wound within the person, which is what, you know, what allowed the entity to come in in the first place. They usually come in through some kind of a trauma or wound or a vulnerability. If that vulnerability isn't taken care of by that person, if a demon is just kind of just go go somewhere. I mean, where are they going to go? You know, you're just kind of shooing them away. It, there's a possibility that they can also come back. Now, um, the, it is like the, you know, kind of part of the law that once something, once, it, and it, it's just that you're sovereign, right? We, we've talked about that before. Every being is sovereign. And once they realize and they see what's going on, once you say, okay, you don't have a right to be here anymore, then they technically they they have to go away but sometimes there are like threads or maybe some subconscious contracts that are going on between that and the entity and that can like bring bring it back yeah you know it um, but when you send them into the light i mean they transmuted themselves they train i mean they didn't just go into the light they became the light and yeah. that's the difference. They become the light. And once they become the light and they go back to source, then there's no desire on their part to even try to come back and cause harm or damage to anyone else, much less the person that they were, you know, attached to before. It seems like it's a parallel to kind of what goes on, what's going on right, right now, this, this, this divide of people and uh living in the truth and people still living in the deception of the matrix. And again, like Bryce, you said Stockholm syndrome. It's like, yeah, people don't, they, they can what is that? Like when you go back to the um, abuser over and over and over again, right. The empathize. Yeah. It, you start to, you start to like almost, um, uh, who was that newspaper heiress? That is an example. A uh, high, uh, what was the, the newspaper paper heiress from California that was abducted and she ended up like, robbing a bank with her abductees because she developed stock. So you start to like become mm -hmm. a enmeshed with your cap yeah. captor almost. And it's a weird mm -hmm. uh, psychological phenomenon. Um, Nancy, uh, I can't right now. I know people are going to probably scream at the computer, her last name, but, um, and I've been to her, I've been to her granddad or dad's estate in California. And I can't remember. I can't remember the name. Anyway, it's when you basically, it's a psychological disorder. It happens a lot with uh, cults. It happens a lot with other organizations where, you, you get so mind scrambled and so confused by the person who's torturing you that you actually start to side with mm -hmm. your, your captor. Um, it's a, it's a mental disorder and it happens and it's, it doesn't happen right away. You know, when someone first is abducted, they're, they're obviously not taking the side of their captor, but over time through mental, um, anguish and, uh, mind control and mind scrambling, they start to kind of lose that i guess it all also turns into them losing their sense of sovereignty because they start to become empathetic with the person that's hurting them and it's um so it almost is like the demons in some ways will develop a part of a, a part of, of of stockholm syndrome but i think it's almost like when you're in a bad relationship when you have this confidence then also that confidence is taken away from you because you um you've been told over and over and over again you're ugly you're no good no one will ever love you and so you start to tell it to yourself yeah and it kind of sounds like that's what the demons you know they were held captive so let's let's say this way i know some of the demons did leave with lucifer at will um but some of them were kind of taken captive and so over time 
it's kind of like when you go into those bad relationships, they were probably conditioned over time. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I know from reading these grimoires that it, we were laughing at it's on Sunday. I, I've said this to people before spirits aren't what scare me. It's human beings that scare me. Mm-hmm. It seems like the dark witches that conjure these demons to do their dirty work are way scarier than the demons themselves. And mm-hmm. I know from studying the grimoires, they have to be tethered. They have to be tethered to their uh, victim. So they're st- kind of stuck to their victim through spell casting and witchcraft. And they're told to do this job. And I said, again, as the video, I, I saw the demon that was speaking through the conduit was saying, I'm scared of, I'm scared of the, the, the person that called me. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do, they're going to punish me. You know, mm-hmm. and so they're they're having to do what what they're told. So it, it's you start to have empathy for these entities, um, and that's and I and I watched the the entity release and go with Michael into the light and go 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 to heal. The guy kept saying, "Just go heal now, go heal now." And I saw it release. I saw the release on the persons when it actually released. And you said something interesting to me too, Cindy. Once that I want to talk about as well, because you've said to me that even though this is what you're trained to do you're technically not the person that releases the entity. It's the person that has the entity attached to them that has to be the one to release it. Oh, totally. I mean, as the, as the practitioner, we're just simply giving them the words and giving them the encouragement and cheerleader. You know, giving them, just giving them the, the general uh, uh, feeling of what's going on, you know, taking them into that space but what also what makes the the releasing actually work is yes they release it themselves because you know they're the ones that are channeling the 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 entity but they're also very conscious about what's going on as well yeah. so it's like the, they they know what's going on and and as we you know go through certain there's a certain lines of questionings that we we go through as well and when they realize how they came in, the vulnerability or the trauma that let them in, when they realize that, then they can let it go. But it's so much more powerful if they release it because it came in through their, um, I wouldn't say permit, they they didn't give active permission, but they were just vulnerable. And that's what allowed them to come in. So because of that, when they say, okay, this isn't, you're, you're not welcome here anymore then that is what actually they have to go. I mean, they, they can't be, they can't. Again, that's, that's just kind of the law, the law of the sovereignty there. If they're told that they can't be there. But if I say it, if I say, okay, go, but the, the person there is still Attach- holding on or hanging on for whatever reason, you know, because they can get attached too, yeah. then it doesn't, it doesn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, super important. I want people to understand because I think that, it's wonderful in this great, and Stephanie and I have had many conversations about this. It's wonderful that people are taking an active interest in spiritual warfare and what spirituality is. But I, I, as, as you guys know, have heard, Cindy's been through a lot of training. Their lineage is here. Uh, my friend uh, Tiffany speaks about how it, it, there's also bloodline lineages that are associated with this kind of thing as well. And so it's way more complicated in a lot of ways when you're working with this than what people think. You can't just shoo a demon away because you see it on somebody without that person knowing. That's not how this works at all. And and um, it does take and that and how how beautiful is that though? Because if there is a wound within the person. It allows, it, it also gives not only the, de- it's like couples therapy, like the demon mm-hmm. gets to go through their therapy and the human gets to go through their, it's like couples therapy, yes. you know, and, um, and that's, and that's a beautiful thing and that healing can happen because that's, that's the goal. It's not, we're not looking to put a bandaid on the wound. We're, we're looking to actually heal it for both mm-hmm. parties involved. And, and so, um, I, I love that you talked about all, all of your training about that you've gone through with this and, um, and how, yeah, it's not. It's not just, oh, I see a demon, so I'm going to go away. No, it's that's not how it works. It's not how it works. Well, no, I mean, it's been such a process. Like, okay, so that was one of the first things that I learned how to do. But then it took like more, many, many, many more years of training 
to then help the person with the wound or with the trauma, you know, whether, whether it's the inner child work or the shadow, you know, we've talked a lot about the shadow work and going in there and, and figuring out what's, what's, what's causing the vulnerability or the weakness and, and, and getting to the core of that. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I mean, cause you're messing with someone's energy. You're messing with someone's psyche. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's not something that you just necessarily want to go in there and say, hey, you know, and plus, you know, there are certain words, yes, that when you're working with the entity, that they go to the right place. Um, because, uh, you know, you, there will also be, which you have to be careful, even when you're sending the entities into the light, even if they're earthbound spirits, um, that sometimes there can be a, um, a malignant spirit that comes in wanting to take that entity back into the dark so you know you got to make sure that whoever's coming in to take them into the light that they are of the highest order of the light you know what i mean so there's a certain protection that you have to put around yourself and i mean i know that i have like an army of beings just through the, you know, the different initiations and the, the processes. I mean, I, I usually feel pretty safe. Now, I'm not going to say that I can't ever be attacking or anything like that, but I usually feel pretty safe because I have an army. <laughs> um, so it's just a little harder. It's a little harder to break. You know, it's a little harder to break through. But that's taken lots you know that's taken like years to to develop that for well, sure let's, let's pause on that because that's a good point when you're putting yourself in that position as going to be the trauma therapist for a demon you are you are in a sense possibly putting yourself in a place of vulnerability because you're looking darkness in the eyes so you have to be aware of your own boundaries and making sure that you know the proper protection um from the highest realm and highest order because again guys everything is based off of consent and so mm -hmm. and that's another thing too i if you know if someone has a demon attached to them that you're seeing you can't you have to get that person's cons consent to actually go through the process of working with them to release the the, the demon it's all about consent um and st uh, before because i want to talk about uh, earthbound spirits as well but before we go to that mm -hmm. stephanie do you have any more questions about demon stuff i actually do i don't know if you know the answer to this cindy this is um something um me and uh bryce's friend ava had uh asked me um and i uh, honestly didn't know the answer it was just a question we were pondering upon um is i wonder if any of us human beings have any sort of uh soul fractal from a previous life that has embodied one of these demons i don't know if that makes any sense at all if like it are you like, talking about, are you talking about you specific, like humans? No, no, just like just people who. So like, for instance, the, the, the little people that are removed underground, that just an, as, as, as an example, if their soul was, I've heard, again, I don't know a lot about this particular, I know you know, enough about demons from like watching you and everything and, li and listening to you and, and being on a shows with you and stuff. But let's say um, one of those little people's souls, there was a fractal that was removed and taken captive by one of these black witches. Would it then develop into something like that? I don't even know if that's possible. It was just something we were like, it was a question that just came, came up. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen anything that way i'm not saying okay. that it's not a possibility but it's nothing that i've personally have uh, um ever encountered um mm -hmm. so i mean i guess anything's possible yeah but i haven't uh i haven't seen that like i haven't had any personal experience with that and I wonder too, because I know that demons and because demons are angels, they're angels and demons are the same beings. It's just, they have the same abilities. They, they were all created, created as angels, just once the dark and once the light. And they're not the same as humans though. So I wonder if that has something to do with it too. The human soul is different than the created differently mm -hmm. than the angelic. Or maybe one of the earthbound spirits. And I, I, I don't know. It's, it's like one of those things that just happened to come up. And I just was curious. I mean, 
my other question is too, like you see these like exorcisms and I'm just bringing, I, I know already know kind of the answer to this, but for those who were like me, who were indoctrinated in the church, for instance, and you, you look at these Catholic uh, exorcisms and stuff like that. Like, is that a real thing? Like, are they actually removing entities or is that just some sort of Hollywood looking thing? Um, you know what I mean? Like just for, for people who have been indoctrinated. You know, I think that, I mean, it's probably, you know, I get the impression that it's a real thing, but it's just a totally different methodology. Okay. Which and I, I don't, you know, I kind of, I kind of like the, uh, our methodology because it's more about, trans just like transmuting the whole it's mm -hmm. like alchemy you know it's like true alchemy instead of it being some kind of violent uh violence yeah like like we know they like, they like that violence and i had mm -hmm. i knew someone once <laughs> with psychic meeting who medium who go into some of these catholic exorcisms and there was one case where the girl kept getting repossessed and they would come in and get super violent and one day he, I was having lunch with him and a friend and he was like, I'm tired of this. The demon's still there because she wants it there. She mm -hmm. likes being possessed. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, this is, this is just a soap opera at this point. She likes the violence. She likes the whole drama of it all. And mm -hmm. I'm done. He's like, yeah, after by going back and forth to this, he's like, I'm done. Like she, she's, she's still possessed because she wants to be possessed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, 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 part and i i agree and i i do think you know when you're violently trying to remove an entity if the human that the that is, a, is hosting the entity doesn't want it gone right no and then a lot of people too they won't let it go because they feel like they need to be punished i mean they really feel on a deep level they were they did something right. terribly wrong or and then they just feel like they need to be punished yeah. And that will yeah. that will also keep attracting because that's that's actually a big yummy thing for a demon. It's like, ooh, they want to be punished or they feel like they need to be punished. I mean, that really? is boom, that is a way in. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's okay. Yeah. Let's talk about earthbound spirits, because that's an even I feel like an even bigger spectrum of of entity mm -hmm. attachments. And I want to be clear because we've talked about this. Just because something's going wrong in your life does not mean you have an earthbound mm -hmm. spirit attached to you or a demon attached to you. Most of the time, mm -hmm. you're, you're your own demon. Most of the time, it's your shit and your shit alone. So so I just want to make that. I mean, they're, they're kind of common, but they're not like that common. Yeah. Where if, you, if you're blaming everything on your life on a demon or an entity without taking responsibility for the choices that you're making, like that's not cool. No, that's, you know, it's kind of a waste of know, time for the, for the, the, for the demon therapist, you know, like, like my friend who was in the meeting was like, I'm done. This girl wants to be possessed. This is a waste of my time and my energy. She keeps getting possessed because she wants it. Like if you're not willing to do the work, then it's, what's the point? What's the point? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so, and it's interesting because I was watching, uh, something last night about how there are some earthbound spirits who do something called jumping where what they do is they try to jump the person. They try to keep trying to jump them because they think they can eventually kind of take over and live and, and be alive again. Have you ever heard of that, Cindy jumping? I've heard of that again. I've never really seen that or i've never had a personal experience with them but i've heard of i've heard of that um basically what and, and yeah you know some earthbound spirits are actually they're not too terrible but some of them are quite grumpy and some of them can do just as much damage as a demon yeah. <laughs> um uh but some of them most of them are uh a lot of times they're relatives um where the person who who has the attachment maybe they were, they were in very very deep grieving and they didn't want to let the person go and so then that the you know the, the one who died so then the entity then becomes almost like tethered to they don't want to go because they want to be there to help to you know to protect the person or be there for that person to give some um, solace in the midst of their grief Hmm. That happens pretty frequently. So um, frequently it is someone that they know. Um, other times it, they come in the same way as like a, a demonic would where uh, it was a child 
a lot of times it's children um, and they are going through something and they feel very alone. And so then that attracts uh, um, an entity. And uh, usually the, the earthbound entity, if they haven't gone into the light, they're, they're very aware of, their, of the way that they died and everything. But usually there's like a lack of peace in their, their death or, or a lack of peace in their life. They, you know, a lot of times they died in a lot of pain. And uh, uh, when, and, and then that pain, like if that, if that entity was in a lot of pain, let's say they had like really bad back pain or something like that, then the, the person it's, it's attached to, they'll experience that too. They'll experience like that back pain. Or, I was going to ask, or, what's oh, a, wow. cause I know that there's a difference. There's probably a difference between like communicating with the other side of the veil, like being able to talk to people who come versus having an attachment. So what oh, yeah. are some symptoms or some side effects if someone has like, you know, their great uncle or something attack or just a passing spirit that was like, Oh, friend and clung on, clung on to them. What are some symptoms or signs that maybe they're, they've got an attachment of an earthbound spirit? Well, there will always be a sense of um, the, an, an attachment is never good. Like ever. Yeah. Um, and like your spirit guides, your angels, they will never, attach themselves to you right i mean they will be there helping you all this but they will never actually attach themselves to you and an, an earthbound entity will actually attach it and they will feed off of your energy yeah. and so you know there's often like just like tiredness fatigue and fatigue. their auric field if you can send it will it will probably be very diminished the very in in instead of out because, uh, but, but I mean, an, an entity will pull it in a whole lot. Um, so, you, you know, so it's more the basic ones are just like maybe a lack of energy or you're, you know, you're, you're tired. And then, yes, you'll start to carry on some of the symptoms. If you, you know, suddenly you have a, a you know, you've, you've gone to the doctor a thousand times and they can't figure out what's wrong with your back pain. I mean, not to say that it's an entity. It could be something that's subconsciously going on with you as well. You know, talking about the energy. Well, and I would say most of the time it's all that. Is. The chakras. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, could, it could totally be yours. Yeah. It could totally yeah. be yours. Um, but uh, it could, you know, there is a chance that it could um, belong to, to someone else too. Um, in children, especially their personalities will start to change because children, they're just so, you know, they're so, there's so much more innocent. And if a child gets one, their, their personality will actually change if they're normally, you know, calm, sweet children. And then suddenly they're angry and they're, they're hard to manage, um, or they're, you know, they, they, there's just a, a, a big shift in their personality, then in the children, you can see that more, more so. Um, but in the adults, is you'll also take on some of the moods. You know, if the um, if they were just tired or moody or sad or depressed, you'll take on all that stuff as well. Um, so yeah, I would say just probably first and foremost is just the tiredness. Um, a lack of energy and then just weird symptoms that no one can seem to figure out like where it's coming from. So I, a, but one of the things you do ask though, um, usually when I'll go in and see, um, because if someone, you know, usually if someone will come to see me for something, they don't always come and say, Hey, I think I have an entity. They say, man, I just feel really tired. I feel sick. I feel this. I feel that. And then, you know, we'll usually go into where they're feeling it. Like, okay, well, so where are you feeling? Where are you feeling the tightness or where are you feeling the pain? And then we'll go into, you know, go into that pain. And then we'll, the first thing we'll, we'll try to figure, the first question is, does this belong to you? And if it belongs to you, then it belongs to you. That means that that's yours, right? That's that's like your stuff. Like, but if it doesn't belong to you, you know, you'll usually get a no that doesn't belong, and then you pull up the um, the entity from there. 
Now, I know that, you know, there's many ways to get entity attachments. Like you could, like you said, it could be a family member that passed away and you're grieving and you kind of unintentionally call it in. Or I know we've talked about, especially, I guess, with children, especially if there's, and there's entities always everywhere roaming around the earth, like human based and not, we're not talking about demons at this point. Um, so I know that sometimes if there's a wound in you, especially with children, one passing by could kind of latch onto the energy as well. And all of a sudden you've got something stuck to you that you're, that you're not totally aware of in your conscious mind, but are other ways to pick up entities and something's been asking me. So like a Ouija board or like a pendulum board, mm. if you're not careful, could you unintentionally attach, have an entity? Absolutely. Freaking lutely. I tell, I was like, I was like, unless you know what you're doing, I was like, don't even play with a Ouija board. Don't, don't even try to, don't summon things. <laughs> Because one, you don't know what you're going to be summoning. I was like, no Ouija boards. Don't summon stuff unless like you're like skilled at summoning. I don't summon things. Well, and that's you know what, what I mean. I mean, I summon like the light, but I don't go around just like summoning. But I mean, like, what's the point? You know what I mean? You're just putting yourself in. I mean, some people do it out of curiosity. And that's yeah. the worst reason to do anything is because curiosity we're curious. kill the cat, oh, right? God. Well, like, I, don't mess with the stuff just because you're curious. Well, even like pendulum boards, like um, like Stephanie and I both use pendulum boards a lot. And I think mm -hmm. we do it very safely. We don't use it that much, actually, as an orb goes by me. I think we do it very safely because we always kind of open it and close it. And we make sure that it's we only try to go through source and it tells yeah. you kind of you kind of feel when something else is. But I've seen a few people now get really out of hand with this it's getting a little bit crazy. And so could, could something like this accidentally summon in a spirit, a trickster little spirit that becomes attached to you? Sure. I mean, it totally can. Any, any, anything where you're connecting to the other side of the veil. Um, I mean, the pendulum is supposed to be your energy. It's supposed right. to be reading you. Right. And I, uh, the way it makes the most sense to me and the way um, I would use it, it's, it's, it's actually more like muscle, you know, like someone who does kinesiology and muscle testing. Yep. yep. Like you store it. It's like a pendulum is an extension of that. It's yep. an extension of you. It's an extension of your energy. It's an extension of your like muscle testing. That's the way I use it. I was just like, just let it be an extension of, of like me. My I know knowing that. Yes. More That's so than I'm going to bring in this, this, this to come through the pendulum. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how so our that's the way I use it. Tamara kind of speaks about this way. I was telling someone this, like, here's mine again. So like, I'll show me. Yes, please. Yes, please. Show me. No, please. So it's reading mm -hmm. my energy pendulum. Do I need more vitamin C? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do need. Do I need more calcium? Mm -hmm. Do I need more red? <laughs> Is that a no? No. What did you say? I need more red. 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 Do like I need more no? fries? Mine would be oh. swinging like woo, like about bread and potatoes yes. and all the comfort foods. Do yeah. I need more water? Yeah. Yeah, That's then you start to right feel, it, yeah. feel it coming back around. Yeah, yeah, so I think of it more like that, like the like a muscle, because you can do like your own muscle testing too. Yeah, where, you know, there's certain things that you can do. Chiropractors do that a lot too. You know, they do the kinesiology, but that's what I think of the pendulum. I use it more along the lines of that than trying to summon, summon in you know, something. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's it's and you always have to take divination with a grain of salt anyway, because your ego is always going to be a little bit involved. Mm -hmm. it, 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 even much as you try to like push that ego away, it's always going to kind of be there. Um, I mean, that's why, like, if I have a question about something serious and I want to div, div read my mind, what you read my mind, you were like, Oh, if I have a question for myself, I always go to someone else about yeah, it. Yeah, like I'll text Stephanie to pull on it because she's going to have a more neutral. And I always ask her to pull the cards mm -hmm. because she's going to have a more neutral. I don't prefer the pendulum, honestly. Like, I used to, I used when I first started using it, it became this like obsession, and I'm like. Honestly, I learned really quickly. It's not always 
accurate. And I realized mm -hmm. that, yeah, your ego can really play a role in it. So luckily I did learn really quickly. So I'd prefer to pull the cards over the pendulum. And again, it's like, I've learned throughout trial and error. Yeah, it's, it, it's more like for your higher self and connecting with your higher self. What do you need and, and stuff like that. So that's why I divinate usually with the cards rather than the pendulum. I mean, once in a while, I'll pull it out, but nothing like it was like when I first started using it. But again, that was I was just a baby coming into this. I came right out of the church. I was like fascinated. I'm like, oh, this can tell me answers. So I was like asking it every single thing I it's, it was like being trapped in um, a, a home that sheltered you and I broke out of it and I went and rebelled. <laughs> that's the kind of like, that's, that's kind of, you kind of have to make those mistakes to kind of learn yeah. your boundaries. Well, that's why I always say I prefer the cards for questions because you can't see what you're pulling, even though yeah. it's using the energy from your hands. But I, 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 and Stephanie will text me and be like, Hey, can you pull on this quickly? And it's because the person is taking a more neutral. I don't like to read on myself. Yeah, I, don't I, really I do not read well on myself because, again, that ego comes in. And that's the last thing I want. I want somebody with a neutral view on it telling me the truth because I'd rather and have the, the truth. And the best way for you to find out the answers for yourself is to drop down and just go into your sacral space. I mean, that's, that's, where, that's where the answers are. I mean, uh, he lives too. Yeah, we're doing... Uh, course coming up on developing your intuition but the purpose is for that you know is so that you can feel and tune in to what the with the right direction for you because you when your your body is the most beautifully complex and accurate i mean think of how how many electrons and everything that you got firing off in your body at all times and how connected your body body i mean just your physical body is to source your physical body is actually your best instrument like for when you're talking about like for yourself you know your physical body is your best instrument for tuning into what are the right decisions for me because if you tune in you'll feel like if you ask yourself the yes and no's like the bigger ask you'll feel an expansion you'll feel a contraction if you tune into the, I mean, it will, exp you'll feel like, like the, yeah, like you can breathe and you feel like an expanse or you feel contract. If you go into the womb in your sacral area, especially, cause that is, uh, um, that's I just did it in my mind. Just now that is wild. Is. That's wild, Cindy. I just did it. I just asked a yes and no question that I know the answers to in my mind. Is something true mm -hmm. or not that I already know. And I, I went to feel it in my, my solar, you said solar plexus area, the womb area? It can be your solar plexus. I felt or it that. Can be down in your sacral area, like in your womb, like here or here. You know, in either one of those areas, those are those are the general good areas. But yes, you will feel like. Yeah. Uh, so drop into your sacral area drop into your womb space and, and you know men also have like the sacral area the women are saying womb space but we all got you know we all energetically have that like drop down there and you'll feel the expansion you'll feel the contraction but the thing is is you have to it, it's one of those things where we're not trained to trust that you know we're we're told it's got to make rational sense right mm -hmm. but yeah. where the true sense is your body's gonna know yeah, yeah. Your that's body like, is going to know. And that's what Ta Tamara says when people say, well, how do I know the difference between my gut reaction and fear? And she says, well, that's simple. Fear makes sense. Your gut reaction doesn't always make sense, but fear will make sense. And so if it doesn't make sense at the time, what you're feeling, that's okay. Just still go with it because there's something your body intuitively knows that your conscious mind isn't aware of yet. Um, so I absolutely, absolutely. I love that. I've been using what you say a lot, uh, Cindy, especially when kind of referring to like Magdalene's texts and stuff, like in order to ascend mm -hmm. in life, you have to descent, you have to descent, mm -hmm. you have to go down into yourself, the human parts of yourself, instead of hanging up in the, I know we've been talking about this, Stephanie, and she talks about this in Eastern yeah. Body, Western mind, that people who are so focused on being up here, especially that third eye, it ends up, ends up becoming delusional. 
because they're not connecting into the root of who they are as a person, grounding themselves. And, um, and I want uh, to, to, to also want to focus too, Cindy, you've said this before, and Stephanie and I have been talking about this. You're dealing a lot with spiritual warfare, and you're going into the quantum, and you're doing this stuff. You've said before, and this is so beautiful, how important physical exercise is to mm-hmm. flush through all of that stuff like you have to be able to get in and no, nothing nothing will bring you into your body down into your body faster than physical exercise in order for you to explore those sensations of being a human well you know you're talking you know we, you know we talked a lot about mary magdalene in the mysteries and you know t- to me it always comes through as the the chalice mysteries it's like the mysteries of the chalice and because uh, one of the symbols of Mary Magdalene, I mean, she has many, but one is like the chalice itself. You might have already read it in the ISIS cut. I don't know if you've come across it. No, we're just with ISIS. She might have. She might have talked about the chalice already, like the body is a chalice. But that's it. It's like you're re- you're restoring the chalice. That that's what keeps coming. Those are the words that keep coming to me over and over again about like what to share with people restore your to restore the chalice but and that but that's coming through from the from the feminine like from the magdalene and all that restoring the chalice because you're the child the body is your it's your everything right now where you know in the past the body has been one of those things that's been like demonized and that's part of the tantric you know the shakti this this part of the shakti path is recognizing the body is supreme itself and an instrument um, as your guidance, because it's the vehicle of your soul and your soul has to communicate with you somehow. So it's going to communicate to you through all your sensations. And so the art is in um, learning how to learn, listen to it, and hear it again. But the physical exercises is what keeps your chalice in shape, right? It's like, yeah, yeah yes, you have to flush things out. You have to watch what you put in it, because there's a lot of things that you can eat and stuff that desensitize see a lot of us when you want to desensitize our child's like there's you know for a lot of especially you know light workers or star seeds the uh and i think we've talked about this like the body's too sensate there's too much feeling here too much feeling here so i want to desensitize let me drink some alcohol or let me eat like that whole big thing of donuts or cookies or let me binge on netflix because i need to numb out listen that those donuts are really really good, really good right now <laughs> those donuts I know. i'm i'm a full mooner on my cycle we're coming up to a full moon now so i'm like ooh, donuts <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll put that in your head now. Now you're going to know, like, the Krispy Kreme. Kreme. Uh, yeah. well, and I tell people too, like I, I mean, I've been in the, in a mindset of over exercising to make your body appear a certain way, but there's such a magic. We have to start in this new timeline. We have to start seeing exercise as something totally different from what we've been fed. When you really get into your body, especially with practices like yoga or bar, uh, bar with B A R R E, which is like an offshoot of ballet, and you're fo- you're forced to bring your mind so deep into your body to feel the movement of the pelvis as it pulls in. I mean. In bar, we you do a lot of those movements of pulling the pelvis, and that is a lot. Of, of focus where you have to come down actually really down into the base of that spine to feel that pulling in. There's such a, an information uh, that's released when it, when it starts to tone itself and it starts to sweat and that top is that heat starts to enter into that area and just releases information within your fascia within your dna i mean the sophia code speaks about this it's already in your dna it just needs to be activated and so if you're mm-hmm. using the alchemy of exercise in a healthy way as a form of your spiritual practice not just to keep yourself spiritually clean but also to help you understand yourself and it forces you in a very way to go down into your physical being versus being out there and because people can use People can use spirituality as a form of escapism. Of course. Well, you, and, and the, the, that whole thing is you learn how to trust yourself again. And, and that's where where I think the problem lies or the disconnect lies. It's, it's not that we, we're not receiving intuitive hits. No. We always are, but we'll either dismiss it like immediately or we, we simply we, we haven't been taught to trust it and to like really learn what, what it feels like. Yeah. And the, 
that's what I feel is such a big part of what's coming in right now through the divine teachings of the of the feminine it is learn how to trust your trust like restore the chalice so that you can trust and you can use good good discernment and make those decisions for yourself and the, but and the, but you can really start to feel it in your body your body will tell you yeah it's, your body is yeah. a miracle i mean your body is like this just this miraculous thing it's the most complex i think uh, system even in the universe from what I understood the from what I understand I mean there's nothing that's more um, miraculous and complex and beautifully created and architected than uh, life yeah. and our bodies absolutely Stephanie I, I know we you've got to go soon because you have another call coming in is there well, I'm going to ask you if any more questions for uh, for Cindy, or do you want to like pull, do a, a card spread to see what spirit wants us to know about mm -hmm. this subject of demons and entity attachments? Up to you. Um, so the cards will have to be more specific. So what exactly do you want to know from the cards? You have a question that you want to ask spirit, Cindy, about uh, demon work or, or do the demon? I have a question. Do the demons want us? Is this, is this a positive turn for humanity for us to understand that some of these demons are also victims? Okay. Is this going to change the way we view? Is this going to change the way we view demons? Demons. Oh, and the toxins. Which I feel like you, Cindy, I feel like if, if every person went about dealing with um, this type of spiritual, most spiritual warfare, guys, I want to make this very clear. Most spiritual warfare is you, you working with yourself. Most of the time, you're the demon. Most of the time, you're the demon. Uh, if you do, if oh, wow, you do guys. your work. Okay, I pulled three cards. I was told three cards only. So I'm getting that. Um, so the Ten of Cups, Ten of Cups is happiness, harmony, family. So this is probably going to shed light in a positive way um, to what exactly um cause it like everything you just talked about cindy it's you know this is going forward when we come across this information more people um especially church people okay because we have a total uh, i say we not me anymore <laughs> but those coming out of the church have a completely different outlook on what demonic activity is they, they blame everything on demons right so this is going to really shed light on and also the fact that they have a spark of light in them they're not necessarily bad. They're literally trapped, confused, deceived, <coughs> pretty much a parallel of the human race for the past how many years, right? Where we've all been deceived as well. So it's going to show that. It's also going to have a lot of people probably let go of um, the programming they have, because this is a card that says you need to let go of something. So let, letting go of um, the false information going forward that we have on demons. Also, this could talk about people literally like looking into maybe how to let go of any attachments they might have um, if they have any. And this is like a coming out of troubled waters card. So what I'm getting with this is I feel like more demonic entities are probably going to be sent back to the light anyways going forward. I mean, we're walking into 4D, so, you know, anything of the negative would have to shift somewhere, would have to transmute somewhere, right? You would think. If we go 40 positive, we go 40 negative, Lord help us all. But, um, but yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's what does the Sophia Co call it? This is the golden age of miracles. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this literally, these two cards could literally be the releasing of these trapped angels really going back toward the light i mean for the most part i would hold all of them that they are willing that's what i got too mm -hmm. i hold as well the five card spread and i almost got emotional because so i asked if there's any demons that want our ex demons that are now in the light that want us tell us anything and first card that came out was the five of swords so, so he's super stressed out he's super upset and the seven of pentacles came out, which again, Nicole reminded me a subscriber. Thank you. Seven is also the planet of Venus or love. And see, he's working on this. He's nurturing this. And then also the ace of pentacles, like there was a freedom offered. An offer was made. And the hierophant came out. And the hierophant could either be a 
aspect it positively or negatively, but I get this positively because of the Hierophant is a spiritual leader. So an offer has been made to a <coughs> spiritual leader to bring the demon back into the light. And the last card that came out, and this is what made, kind of gave me the goosebumps, was the Temperance card. And if you look at the Temperance card on this Light Seeker's deck, this guy has wings behind him, but look, there's two, almost like the two of pentacles. There's a dark and a light, almost like the dark is transmuting back into the light. So through work like Cindy's work and her teacher's work in this lineage of actually not just going to war against the demons, but actually a rescue mission. It's a rescue mission mm -hmm. to remind them that they are actually, I mean, when you hear that, anytime you hear that any living entity or being has been mentally abused you can't you can't help but feel empathy and to get them back into the light this is a trend this is in this deck it looks like a tr it looks like that that alchemy of dark to light mm -hmm. and because that because that offer was made that offer was made they were able to come into back into the light from this yeah Guys, so that's beautiful. Okay. That's I love beautiful. that. I love so, that. Yeah. It's a liberation for not only humanity, but I, I, I believe a lot of these um, either trapped spirits or trapped angels. It's just yeah. a, a multidimensional liberation. I mean, how many, how long have they been stuck in that, those chains of bondage? Like, Lord, oh God. God. see, talk about a telenovela. That was a a Jerry Springer episode, years. like what, you know, but, um, but yeah, it's, that's a beautiful thing. And I, as I said on Sunday, when we were talking, I was like, I fear the humans way more than I feel that fear the entities because the entities have been confused and trapped into this. It's the humans that are summoning them that are the real problems. So, um, you know, but if they're willing to take healing, there's healing for them as well. So, um, so anyway, it's available to everybody. Available Anytime. to everybody. Um, so, Cindy, do you have any? What courses do you have coming up at Sacred Garden? Um, there's a developing your intuition course. This is, it is actually the course is actually called Intuition. It's starting in July, and there will be one that's offered in the studio and. One that's offered, um, yeah, yeah, there it is, Intuition. And it's also offered online. And we'll also be working with the cosmic forces of Mercury, of Mars, and the moon um, as part of it. Because, you know, you're talking about Mars, but uh, empathic people, intuitive people need to know how to set good boundaries for themselves. That's yeah. part of learning, you know, like, like so that's lesson. Mars work. And, yeah, and then Mercury is the uh, planet of, of like magic i mean he's all about magic and communication and the moon of course we know the moon we always associate the moon with like the different phases of the moon and intuition and trusting and dropping into i mean if there's any uh cosmic force that represents the chalice it would be the moon because you know, we've talked about the moon before too how the moon is also representative of the body itself but anyways we'll we'll be developing intuition but we'll be working through through some of those cosmic understandings and while we go through things to also improve your psychic, not just your intuition, but psychic development, giving practices yeah. that will help because, you know, we're talking about exercise, like the intuition in the, your develop psychic development doesn't just kind of, I mean, it's all there, it's available to everybody, but it takes, um, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, you just don't, automatically become a highly intuitive no. without you know, you know it, but without building the skill without yeah. building it and absolutely we give some practices for that well mm -hmm. i wanted to point out these two guys on her website she also has e healing services so that's something else you're looking for some healing services we have the schedule here my class on sunday is not mm -hmm. on zoom can't really do our guys, what i want to do uh, maybe when, if, if you're ever up to it, one day when you're, you're teaching the class, I'd like to record it and then we can put it on the Sacred Garden Yoga site. Like you actually just going through the okay. primary or full primary. Yeah. And that way, you can hear all the beautiful teaching grunts. Be available <laughs> and then you can share it too. But, you know, we could actually record the class. Yeah, and then we can put it up, and then they we'll have to tell all the students can coming to make sure they wear their best Lululemons that day. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> don't so, wear your pants backwards or inside well, out and everything else. Like, I, I, always, come in. I always laugh, Stephanie, until like, you know, you go to some yoga classes and the girls are in their like cute little yoga clothes, their hair all braided and pretty. And then you go to our Ashtanga class and it's just like a, sh a flop shot shit show of people just trying to survive. Like their pants are all backwards, <laughs> inside out, their bra doesn't match. They have everybody, regardless of what your hair looks like leaves in a Sean class with Albert Einstein hair, you know, bless your heart. If you wear makeup, the mascara is going to be down your face by the end of the class. So and it's on a Sunday morning on top of that. So yeah. you're like, it's, uh, the, I, I, one day I've, I've always joked about in a Mysore class, especially like recording the sounds of Mysore, just as the grunt and all the mm -hmm. F-bombs that are dropped and all, all the oh shits that are dropped and all the thunks of people like learning their TikToks and smacking the floor and falling out of inversions. And um, it's definitely a very different, uh, different experience. So, so yes, that, we could totally do that. We could absolutely totally do that. So um, yes, but if you are interested, Cindy's classes are on Zoom and I'll, I'll, I'll put Cindy's website and all of her contact as well as uh, Stephanie's. I know Stephanie, you're booked until like July though, right? With your readings. Mid July. Yeah. Um, so uh, when is this, when is this video getting posted? Uh, Thursday morning. Okay. So I'll just announce it now. I'm likely going live on Saturday afternoon. Bryce is going to moderate me. <laughs> so she gets to whack a troll. Um, yeah. That'll be fun for you, Bryce. Get your anger out. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I'm going to do uh, live um, like one question readings for those in the chat, likely. Um, so I'm working on that. I've never done a live before. Um, also, too, I'm going to be having a I'm going to announce this soon on my channel probably at some point early next week as well. I'm going to do uh, five questions for $25. Um, bang, 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 all recorded. And I, and I send it to the email. Um, so the questions and payment will have to be sent in. And then I will uh, do a recording and send that person um, their quick little reading or something like that. I'm still nice. working out the kinks of that. So that's something I'm going to do because I know a lot of people do want to get in. Um, our friend Ava is offering readings and she has more availability that's closer to. So if anybody wants, I have her links. I've been linking her Calendly link in all of my videos as well because okay. we, we help each other out. Yeah. So if you want a full, so what I'm going to say now, I guess if you want a full reading with Stephanie, it'll be, it'll be into July before you can get a spot with her, but she is possibly going to be doing these quick five, five questions with a pre-recorded video, hopefully soon. Once you figure that out, just let me know, Stephanie, I'll make a post in the community tab. Uh, but I'll put Ava's uh, contact information as well down in the description box below in case there's somebody wants a, Ava's an incredible reader. She's one of the best Oracle readers with Oracle. Yes, um, she's incredible. She's better than me at Oracle, boy. Oracle or hard. hard. hard you know, Oracle is like super positive. It's like, it's harder to read an Oracle card than it is a tarot card. I agree. Um, maybe I just like the telenovela of the tarot card. It's always a little bit more dramatic. Maybe that's more <laughs> my, 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 uh, my, my style, but, um, but anyway, um, and of course all of Cindy's contact information with her website, her Twitter, her Instagram, her YouTube channel will all be down in the description box below guys, especially with exercise. When we talk about exercise, we're not saying you have to get up off your ass and go run a marathon. Don't be silly. Um, and if you need it, if you want to, if you're, if you're still so super curious about yoga, cause I just did a live about yoga, S Cindy does have practices on her YouTube channel. So you can always go and try those practices on her YouTube channel. And you, again, if you look on the class schedule for sacred garden yoga, there are some zoom options. So if you don't live in Georgia, if you live a, a far away, you're, you can come into those zoom classes. Just make sure you understand that we're on Eastern time. Cindy in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Sorry. My dog thinks he's the Cindy knows Robbie. She's not Robbie. He thinks he's the sheriff. If anybody dares walk by the house without his permission, Lord help their soul. They're going to get a citation from him. <laughs> but um, so cute. So, um, he's very mouthy. So um, if you want to, so, so Eastern time. So Cindy and I are on the same time as New York city. For those who are not in the United States, that's the exact same time as New York city. So you can look on your clock. That's when you know the time difference. So just make sure if you are signed up for one of the zoom classes that you are taking that into account. 
that it's that time for Eastern time. So, all right, ladies, well, this has been super, super, super fun. I am going to leave the comments up on this video. If we get any nasty, abusive or violent comments from the Christians who like to come after us with pitchforks, they will just be blocked and the person will be blocked as well. But for those of you lovely souls, 99, the 99.9% .9 of you lovely souls who are awesome, I'm going to open up these comments because if you have any questions for Cindy, regarding the regarding the topic we talked about today if there's some confusion or you just want to understand more leave them down in the comment section below and and then perhaps we can do a follow-up on your questions so um just let us know all right ladies i know you got to go do some reading stephanie so um i'm gonna go ahead and sign off for us thank you so much guys and cindy i will be seeing you on sunday yes <laughs> all right thank you bye, bye.